with the culinary gangster. Be careful how you approach me. What the f going on here? Found the food. They sent it back. Smell it! I feel awful. I feel awful. Like I feed my daughter from here. <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares is no stranger to people absolutely butchering every health and safety standard out there. I don't think I'm making any waves by saying that. But these kitchens were so bad, they had Ramsay reconsidering his decision to come back with a new season of the show in the first place. Yep, these are the grossest kitchens we've seen so far in season 8. Alright, let's see what's going on over at Basque 46 in Woodland Park, New Jersey. So, this gastropub ran into trouble just six months after throwing its doors open to the world. The restaurant is owned by Steve and Sandy the power couple who had been together for more than two decades, running bars and other joints all the while. After a string of successful business ventures, the couple were looking forward to kick off their biggest restaurant yet, but unfortunately, their house of cards came tumbling down. While Sandy spent all of her hours at the restaurant desperately trying to get things back in order, Steve chose to hide in his so-called office instead of, you know, trying to fix things. But the blame didn't lay squarely on his shoulders. Because here comes the real failure, I mean, man, of the hour. You're with the culinary gangster. Be careful how you approach me. However, when Ramsay showed up, viewers were quick to notice how Chef Bobby's gangster facade started to crumble. So, who's the real gangster here, huh? Ramsay had to dig deep and bust out the patience of a saint just to last two seconds near this guy. But here's the real truth of the matter. Tensions were so high that it left Steve's health on the line. My investments are, are, are blown away. I put over a million dollars into this place. I don't want to go bankrupt. Steve was sweating buckets, literally drowning in business expenses, and questioning his life choices. But now, let's talk about the kitchen. There, Chef Bobby was the only one who called the shots. Watch the temperatures on them. Every steak was messed up yesterday. Because you're aggravating the shit out of us. What a chef to get on the kitchen. The dude loves spending money, but guess what? No one was keeping tabs on where the dough was going. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that this is how Steve saw him. Chef Bobby is the kitchen nightmare. Steve, you come to the right? When the kitchen don't even talk. It's one thing to deal with difficult owners, but it's another thing entirely to deal with an arrogant chef. Ramsay definitely had his hands full. And things were already off to a terrible start with the QR code at the entrance. So no menus? No, just the QR code, yeah. We don't have menus. Right. This QR code does not exist. They redirected customers to a website where they had to practically go through a maze just to get to the menu. Because who'd want to make things easier on their customers, right? What's more, for a restaurant who claimed everything was homemade and authentic, the mac and cheese was loaded with fake as hell cheese sauce. I wouldn't call anything with cheese whiz in it my signature anything. Ramsey's disbelief was palpable. Onions are raw, the flavor is terrible. And they're saying it's a signature cheese sauce, so it must be homemade, but it tastes like. So Ramsay arrived at a conclusion. Management was clueless about basic business knowledge. And to make things worse, accountability was out the window. Come to me and give me the review, man to man. Oh, now for the reason we're all here. The inventory was rotten. In the freezer, the nightmares inside the thing were straight out of a horror movie. What is this with Bobby? He's earning more money than you and your wife put together. Yes, he is. A hundred and grand. That, and that kills me. The salary for an exec chef in this area, uh -huh. 70 grand tops. But he's not even delivering 50% of what you're paying for. Yep. That's a frozen chicken swimming in a tub of batter, all on its own. But wait, there's more. Man, that chicken must have stunk to high heaven for Ramsay to have reacted like that. Not even the fruits or veggies were spared from the aura of decay sitting over the place. And well, Ramsay was left with no other option but to shut down the restaurant, for obvious reasons. And then, it was time to lay down the law. 
Ramsey ordered them to clean up their act, literally and figuratively, and the whole team needed to step up and face the music. This, this is where your money's going, right here. Meanwhile, Steve finally realized it was time to take charge of his business. I can't start to help you guys if you're not prepared to help yourselves. With that, Ramsey and his squad revamped the patio and added a fresh new menu to liven things up around the place. It was small, simple, and dynamic. There's gonna be no more wasting money on oversized portions here, thank you very much. During the relaunch, people were digging the new flavors, especially the chicken wings. Those tacos are great. Thank you. The way this kitchen is functioning is night and day. Thank you. Early start. But Bobby was having a complete meltdown, which I'm sure absolutely made Ramsey's day. Seven all day. Oh, my life. Slammed right now. And I just, you don't understand, it's just a lot. Rapido, rapido, rapido. But despite the rocky start, they pulled through and they ended the night on a high note. Ramsey left them with some words of wisdom and encouragement, all wrapped up in an ultimatum. Prove yourself in 30 days or pack your knives. As for Bobby, well, some things never change. Middle of dinner service. I want to see we had a good start. The problem now, the wheels are falling off and Bobby's reverting back to his old ways. Banging his food out and sadly he's not communicating, he's just shut down. But we've barely even waded into the shallows here. Because what went down at Bel Air Diner? Well, if you know, you know. Either way, the siblings running the place, barely even speaking to each other, definitely wasn't putting their best foot forward. But Ramsey was here, aiming to return the place to its former glory as the hottest spot in Queens. But the only thing that was on the menu was... Uh, hold on, my joke is definitely somewhere in this phone book of a menu. Seriously, how many items were on there? Ramsey lost count, and he wasn't even halfway through. Right, appetizers, homemade wings, page three, we're just on the cellar bar. It's like an encyclopedia, this thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there is one thing a diner can never go wrong with, a solid cup of joe. But what Ramsey got just wasn't what he was expecting. Oof. Jeez Louise. And well, the food didn't do them any favors either. The tortellini were store bought, and the lobster, which was supposed to be fresh out of the tank, was raw, mushy, and just rancid. It is. That lunch was shocking. I mean, really bad. Oh, that well. The lamb wasn't looking like any lamb Ramsay had seen before, and the fries had mysterious black bits in them. Ramsay was so upset that he decided to skip dessert and get down to business right away. Did that end up being a mistake? Well, you tell me. Cal came over for a reality check, and Peter, um, the dude was MIA. And, well, once he did show up, Peter had his own justification for never showing up. I don't feel like I'm respected as, as a, a brother. Are you unappreciated here? I feel I am, yes. But they had to put petty things like that aside and start working towards reviving the business. Or things were going to get pretty hairy. Tonight is both of you running this place. I want to see it in operation, okay? See you shortly. Cut to the dinner service, and Ramsey was shocked. The chefs couldn't even dish out a simple burger. God. This is not a fucking joke. That's ice cold and it's raw in the middle. These guys need to wake up. But while that train wreck of a service was rolling along, Ramsey decided to let them stew for a bit and go inspect the basement in the meantime. Whether or not him skipping dessert was a mistake, going down into that hellhole of a basement definitely was. Brace yourselves, because what you're about to see is genuinely that disgusting. Fans of the show just haven't been able to let the topic go ever since the episode aired. This was a place where produce went to die. There was stuff that had been there for weeks, not days. And to make things worse, there was absolutely no logic behind the way things were stored. <coughs> like, honestly, it was a legitimate death trap. They should have been handing out hazmat suits to anybody who walked by on the streets, let alone dared to walk into the restaurant. But Ramsey put it best, calling the place a ticking time bomb.
Now, did you see the chicken? It was just casually chilling in that nasty, slimy water like it was no big deal. And those meat trays? Wide open. And who knows how long they'd been sitting there exposed to the elements. But the oil, oh boy, the oil. Ramsey wasn't kidding when he said it was a ticking time bomb. The place could have gone up in flames at a moment's notice with all that grease caked up in there. So Ramsey had to act fast before they literally blew everybody up. All off. All off. Shut it down. That's gotta be the worst. It was time for the brothers to take responsibility. You can't just keep passing the buck and expect things to magically turn around all on their own. At this point, the fate of the restaurant was at stake. Ramsey took the opportunity to make that abundantly clear. The practices down there are shocking. And I'm talking produce that is gone. Weeks gone. Not days. The place was quite literally their family's lifeline. It was time they paid more attention to what had been going on there for all their sakes. Smell it! I feel awful. I feel awful. Like I feed my daughter from here. <laughs> Ramsey wasn't gonna leave without setting them straight first. He asked the brothers to bury the hatchet and work like a team. The dream was to pass on their legacy, but it seemed like they were losing sight of it. We're building this business three decades ago. It was your dream to pass this on. Ramsey then decided to show them the ropes of how a real well-oiled restaurant runs. And to do this, he took the brothers over to Times Square to show them how things should be working, efficiently and effortlessly. And hygienically, let's not forget hygienically. Fast forward a bit, and the diner had a whole different vibe. A retro look, making the diner shine. The decor was fixed. The menu was trimmed down, thank God. And Ramsey kicked things off. It was time to rock and roll. New $18,000 Senesso Espresso machine. However, during the dinner service, the kitchen hit a roadblock almost immediately. And Ramsey wasn't thrilled. What's going on here? It's raw. Hey, it's raw. Finally, Peter stepped up, and Cal handled the front of house, eventually managing to finish strong. Generation. You want something else? I can get you something. Giving mum and dad a well-earned retirement. Not a bad start to a whole new story, eh? Anyway, we've jumped from New Jersey to New York so far in this video, so how about we jump back to the good old Garden State again? Let's take a look at this golf course joint in the drink, run by George and Solange since 2017. On the outside, the joint was pulling in a crowd of up to 80,000 golfers. But you wouldn't know that once you walked into the actual place. If, uh, you can find it, that is. Where the hell's the sign? In the drink. I'm in the dark. Is, is this it? It's a gloomy vibe all around in the decor. There was no decor, actually. I was just admiring your patch. My renovation, you like that? That's do I like it? What do you think? It looks stupid. Oh, that's a first. As for the food, it wasn't taking home any awards, not by a long shot. It looks like he had given up, and to make things worse, the co-owners were clueless about the place's finances. You see, George might be a nice guy, but he wasn't the best boss. He was hardly around and cared so little about what was happening in his own restaurant, he may as well have not been there at all. Meanwhile, Nadia, the unsung hero, did everything she could to keep the ship from sinking. All right, so when Ramsey walked in, and trust me, it took him a while to do that, he felt lost. There were no signs, nothing to point him in the right direction. Oh dear. <sighs> this place looks bleak. He sat down for a taste test, and this is where the actual drama began. The chicken was too dry, and the quesadilla was hard to swallow. But this was the worst of them all. You're on the food? They send it back. Oh my God. But I'm not even done yet. Caesar salad, bland. Burgers, overcooked. I didn't even think it was possible to be more disappointed, but here we are. Meanwhile, the staff was just watching the meltdown unfold. It was like a train wreck they couldn't look away from. So Ramsey had been around this place for over an hour, and there was still no sign of George. Nobody knew where he was at, but turns out he'd been chilling in his office the whole time. 
Any news of the owner? Yeah, so I just texted George and apparently he's been here in his office the whole time. And when they finally met, he had to get him on the same page real quick. The best thing about this restaurant? Yeah. Is the service. Great. Food was terrible. <laughs> but George was in denial. I mean, how bad could it be, right? But Ramsey was having none of it. How can you say that? I mean, we do have a good food. Where is the good food? It was time to show the man how to run a business. He came up with a genius idea of having a drink cart on the golf course. Those carts are cash cows, some making up to a cool two grand a day. But oh boy, George was clueless about the potential gold mine he was sitting on. But in terms of the drink card, George definitely doesn't pay as much attention as needed. This viewer seemed to get the hint, and he knows exactly what to have on those cards. Wraps and sandwiches. The ultimate filling finger food for the hungry golfer. I hope you're taking notes, George. Anyway, Ramsey was back at the restaurant, ready to see how the place functioned during a busy dinner service. I, for one, was wondering how they were planning on actually getting butts in seats in the first place, but guess they figured it out somehow. George claims that he was the expediter on most nights, but you've got to see how his staff reacted to that claim. Here, most nights expediting, my jaw drop. That is a complete lie. Methinks we have a liar amongst us. George's wife was the real power on that front. Meanwhile, the food going out was all wrong. The sliders were too salty, the chicken not cooked, and the salmon may as well have still been alive. Soon, the kitchen was drowning with orders, and the ticket times were completely off the charts. When the food started coming back to the kitchen, Ramsey lost his patience, and George's so-called expediting skills were almost non-existent. He's just pulling them and putting them, and I had to take mine out from underneath all the tickets. Multiple yeah. The night ended in a failure of spectacular proportions. Ramsey shut down the kitchen, and the customers were sent packing. And who had to face the brunt of it? Carlos, the overworked chef. Yeah. I've removed like of Carlos from the kitchen. He was beyond burnt out right now. George definitely wasn't taking the blame. When Ramsey confronted him, he simply lost it. You yes. don't understand. You're not listening. I don't understand. You're not listening. But hey, 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 Ramsey came back with a plan. He had a new trick up his sleeve. And he was going to hit the golf course again. Of course, with the food. Yeah. The on the golf course and really maximize on potential food sales. <laughs> These carts could bring in half a mil a year and George was sitting there in disbelief. What's more, after the crew worked their magic, the place went from looking like a funeral home to rivaling a legit country club. And the menu, finally, finally, pretty good. Have a beautiful clubhouse restaurant. We need the foods to be in keeping with the restaurant. No more boring combo platters. Ramsey brought in the big guns with honey glazed wings, sliders, burgers, and chicken Caesar wraps. The taste test went off without a hitch, and the kitchen was ready to rock it. Then came the big night, where they needed to put that food in front of real customers. George was playing waiter, but you could tell that the dude had never worked anywhere near the hospitality industry before. The dude just needed to sit down and shut up, in my opinion. Meanwhile, the kitchen was rocking it. Thank goodness for that. In the end, Ramsey left with a strong message for George. The man needed to trust his team, delegate, and embrace the change. It was time to turn things around. Fast forward a bit, and in the drink was swarmed with customers. George was finally able to settle a few debts, and Nadia, now the manager, was running the show like a boss. As for Chef Carlos, he was living the dream with some well-deserved days off. And Ramsey's recipes? Well, I don't think I need to tell you how good his cooking is. So which one of these places do you think is the worst? Or is the worst still yet to come later on in the season? Get in the comments and let me know. And hey, don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free, where we can track the progress of all the restaurants featuring on the show this season, in real time. And guess what? 
I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.